how did you deal with those challenging conversations with parents who maybe weren't happy with the direction you were taking the team, maybe felt that their child needed more playing time or, or whatever, they, whatever bone they had to pick with you? How did you deal with those conversations separate from obviously what you're building internally with the team? Great question. One I don't get very often, actually. And it turns out, as you guys know from the employers, it's amazing how much more often uh, these employers are dealing with parents as well. One, I've read stories about bringing your parents for the year-end evaluation. You're 24. What? <laughs> My parents wouldn't have gone if I asked them. So <laughs> I know that much. But anyway, two things. One, you try to nip it in the bud. Almost all problems I try to nip way upstream. Uh, as I say about fires, if you get the fire when it's in your wastebasket is not very big. If you wait long enough, it's your whole damn house. Uh, so get the bucket of water as fast as you can and end it as fast as you can. Try to smell at the problems early on. First Monday after the team gets made, we have a players meeting, I go over all this stuff. And then a few days later, we have a parents meeting, we'll go over all their stuff. And I said, you are not only welcome to talk to me about anything you want, you're encouraged to do so, including grandparents getting sick, Kid getting sick, girlfriends, problems at school, whatever's going on that you think I should know about. Girlfriends never made the list, thank thankfully, I guess. Our boyfriends or whatever. Except for two things. One, strategy. And two, playing time. And here's why. And, and I had them sign contracts, by the way, on this one. Uh, I drew up, up a neutral zone trap, which is a hockey system. Um, well known by the Pittsburgh Penguins. You'd be glad to know, Johnny. And I said, uh, okay, who here knows how to break the neutral zone trap? I got the pen right here. Nobody? Okay. I'll coach the team this year, and we'll see how that goes. Uh, and if I have a question, I'll ask Red Berenson, the Michigan coach, or Barry Smith, the Red Wings assistant coach, or Herb Brooks, who beat the Soviets in 1980. I've got a great Rolodex here. If I have a question, I'll get good answers. All right? So that's one thing we're not talking about strategy. Two, the far dicier one, as you know, is playing time. I said, let me explain something here. I get five skaters in the ice, and I get a goalie. All right? And everything is zero sum. If your player wants more playing time, it comes out of her son's pocket, all right? I, that's all I get, all right? So I guarantee you two things. Everyone on this team is going to get everything they need to succeed, and nobody is going to get everything they want, all right? Including the star player. I'm benching him when we're up by five goals in the third period. He gets benched so I can dress through it, and, you know, I can play third and fourth line players. He will not get everything he wants, all right? And nor will the others and so on. So treatment will be equal. Playing time will not. Um, and if you want equal playing time, here's the number for the local Little League. All right, there you play every third shift, and there's value in that. I get it. All right, now, unlike most coaches, if you're in uniform, I, I would play you. Uh, not equally necessarily, but I'd, you'd, I'd get you in. Uh, I was always bigger than that. But anyway, so that was the deal at first. And I'd show of hands. Everyone here understand this? Show me your hand. Nonetheless, you know what happens. Uh, I got two nasty emails in my four years, which out of 100 parents, you can't complain about that. They were. Nasty enough that I remembered them. Uh, I can probably still quote some of them to this day. The things that I thought were, you know, accused me of, you know, false things, being mean or whatever, which is not true. Um, I love their kids. I love them sometimes more than the parents. But you're still going to get some. And on that point, uh, so you try to fend it off. But on that second point, okay, it sucks to get an email like that. I can't deny it. And it affected me. No, I can't deny that either. And then I'm reminded of a beekeeper I once met when I was working on a farmhouse and I tore open a beehive behind the walls by accident, gigantic. And of course I got stung four or five times, bring the beekeeper in. And all he wanted was the 500 beehive. It's apparently a great hive. So I can vouch for that. Uh, <laughs> and I said, uh, I gotta ask, you know, do you ever get stung? And he didn't even look at me. He said, plumbers get wet, beekeepers get stung. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, that's kind of it. <laughs> if you don't like water, don't be a plumber. If you don't like getting stung by bees, don't be a beekeeper. If you don't like blood, don't become a surgeon. And if you can't stand being criticized, do not be a leader because you will get criticized. And it won't be fair and it won't be when you want and everything else. It's going to happen. And it sucks. Uh, but if you can't handle that, get back in line and be a follower.